Hey guys, welcome to another daily devotional with me, Swen. And again, as always, we're going to read a short scripture, give, share a devotional thought, and then I'm going to end up praying for us at the end. And today, jumping into um, Mark chapter 6, just a couple of verses in Mark chapter 6, something interesting happens here, um, which Jesus is amazed by. And so, love to share that with you. And if you haven't just yet, and you and you like audio podcasts, why don't you check out in the description, there will be a link to the audio podcast if you like to listen to this on your way to work to get your devotional nugget in, um, to get your day started off good. Uh, I recommend that. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we'd love you to do that. Uh, it'll help, but also get this to you each and every time a new video is released. But I want to pray just that our hearts open to receive the word that God's got for us today. And so, Father, thank you so much for your word. I pray that you lead us and guide us, and I pray that our hearts would be open to receive your word and our eyes would be open to see what you're saying to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So it says in Mark chapter 6, verse 1, that Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath... He began teaching in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. They asked, where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? Then they scoffed. He's just the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph, Judas and Simon. And his sisters live here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do miracles. He couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their unbelief. You know, I think it's, it's, it's so interesting in this passage of Scripture where, where Jesus has returned to the place where he grew up and, and people were familiar with him, familiar with his story, familiar with his family, saw him as a child, saw him grow up to become a man, to follow it like in, as a carpenter like um, his you know, earthly dad, Joseph, and then he went out on his ministry and wherever he went, healing people, setting people free, teaching with authority, bringing people into the kingdom of God. But now he returns home and they, they are offended at what he is saying. He's like, there's no ways that, that this is the guy. Like he's teaching so profoundly, but there's no ways. Like what he's saying is ridiculous. And because of that familiarity and knowing their part, like, like his growing up years, they were offended by him. And what I find astounding is, number one, is that Jesus was amazed at their unbelief. You know, when, I, when we've read in previous passages where Jesus was amazed by someone, he was generally amazed by their faith. When I think about the lady that, that touched the edge of Jesus' garment and was instantly healed from an issue of internal bleeding, Jesus was amazed by her faith. When I think about the, is it the centurion who said, no, Jesus, please don't, don't come to my house. Just say the word and, she, and my, my, you know, my servant will be healed. And, and Jesus did. And he was amazed by their faith. Here, among his own people, among friends, family he grew up with, he was amazed, not by their faith, but their unbelief, their lack of, not just their lack of faith, but their unbelief, like, like they couldn't believe that Jesus was able to do things. And, and what happened was, because of their unbelief, Jesus could only do a few miracles there. Everywhere else he goes, people have, are responding with faith, and people are getting healed and set free wherever he's going. But there, because of the unbelief, he could not do, it says he couldn't do any miracles among them, except, you know, with the exception, a few people got healed. And what it says to me, like, I don't want to get into this deep, you know, theological discussion of could he have done more? 
You know, is it, did he want to do more? Did he, like, so all of that. But what I, what I do think about this, what it speaks to me about, is that there was a limitation at, in play to what he would do among them or could do among them because of their response. I fully believe that if they had faith, he could have done more. But because of their unbelief, he was almost restricted in some ways for what he would do. And, and the image that I get in my mind when I think about this is, you know, when, when we go to the basin or to the tap and we turn the tap on, water comes through. The water is kind of there. It's waiting to come. But it is the, the, the action of opening the tap that releases the water into a glass, into the basin, whatever. And that's, I think, is the relationship with faith and grace. It is God's grace to bring healing. It is God's grace to set people free. It's God's grace to give salvation. But it is always accessed by faith. And faith is the tap. Faith is the, 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 the fact that we have to actually work with God. We don't, we don't manufacture the water. We don't work the water. We don't you know, go to a well and pour the water. All we do is open the tap because the water is available. But it's the action of turning the tap on that actually draws releases the water and in the same way it's the activity of faith that actually releases God's grace into our life it is by faith that we are saved it is by and here it is by faith that more miracles could have been done but the unbelief limited the work which God wanted to do and so my big thought around this is simple are there areas of my life that are actually exhibiting unbelief. I don't want my unbelief to limit the work that God wants to do in my life. I actually want to experience the fullness of God in my life. And I, I want you to experience the fullness of God in your life and through your life. And, and the key to that is overcoming unbelief by turning the switch of faith on and asking God to help us where we're weak in faith. And to actually stretch our faith to believe that God can. And whenever we do that, we, we risk disappointment. Maybe God didn't want to do that. But yet we still expanded our faith. And faith is like a muscle that keeps working. And yes, the risk is that we'll get disappointed because we don't understand everything in this life. And, and there are some mysteries that God won't reveal yet. But I'd rather battle and travel through disappointment but always have faith to believe that God would, than to limit what God, is, God wants to do because of unbelief. I hope that makes sense. And so maybe for you to think about what areas of your life is there unbelief in, and I think we all have areas of life. And so maybe, and then pray into those. I'd love to pray for you now as we close. Father, I just thank you. I thank you that you reveal your word to us and that you could give us open eyes and ears to hear and a heart to perceive what you're saying. Father, I pray that for all of us, that you would open our eyes to where we lack faith or where we have unbelief, and that you would help us, God, to exercise faith in those areas. And Father, I pray that as we do that, that you would help us to travel through the moments when we don't understand and maybe we get disappointed. But God, that we would also see more miracles in our life, the supernatural take place because we can believe for you, believe you for it, Lord. And so God, help us to overcome unbelief and help us to gain greater faith because you said it's not the size of faith, but that we exercise faith, the faith the size of a mustard seed even. So Father, I pray that you help us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God, it's been wonderful to be with you online like this. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.